Where does it feel for you that you're kind of working edges? Well, I feel like I know the theory. Yes. But then how do I move on? There is a place inside of you that is longing for, for love, for attention. And what that looks like is opening to it. This is In Therapy with Alex Howard, a first of its kind series that places you directly in the therapy room. My name is Alex Howard, and it is my hope that by bringing you on the journey with us, you too can learn the tools to transform your life. This series, we're following Pierre, whose life is overshadowed by a sense of unworthiness and a fear of rejection. Pierre has come to in therapy to overcome his childhood trauma and to realize his true self-worth. Curious then if you bring into your mind that younger place inside of you. That little boy has learned some fundamental things about himself and the world that, as far as he's concerned, helped him survive. But then the walls that you built to protect yourself are now the walls that have, have caused you to feel trapped. Join us each week as we follow every step of Pierre's journey, both in and outside of the therapy room. As well as the tools I give Pierre in the sessions, I'll also be sharing weekly top tips so you can begin to unlock your true potential. This is In Therapy. It's the day of Pierre's second session with me. In our first session, we explored Pierre's background and his reasons for wanting therapy. If you haven't yet checked out episode one, I recommend going back before watching or listening to this week's episode. And to see how Pierre has been doing since his first session, my producer Oliver checks in with Pierre before the session starts. So how have you been uh, this week? Yeah, good. Not too bad? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, no, better than not too bad. I've been good, I think. Okay. So, in what in what way have you been good? Well, there was a night where you know, my my mind was racing, and I think mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, I would I would have led, that would have led to a meltdown, really. Whereas it was just me and my thoughts, really. So uh, interesting. Yeah, that's in my book. That's progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what do you think um, sort of triggered that change in thinking? I try, I try to, you know, uh, be a friend to myself, mm -hmm. really, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, it looks like it worked. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that really struck me after our first session was how aware Pierre is of the connections between his childhood experiences and his life now as an adult, particularly around his feelings of value and worth. But as I mentioned last time, it's one thing to understand your emotions logically and another thing to truly feel and process them. Here's the session. So there's the awareness and there's some understanding and I think some good work that, that you've done with it so far. Where does it feel for you that you're kind of working edges like where's the place that you feel you've got to with it that needs some more help to move mm. or or perhaps feel stuck or or just doesn't yet feel fully integrated well i feel like i know the theory yes or you know i can understand what happened how it's affecting me blah 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 but then you know uh how do i move on yeah really that's the thing Pierre explains that one of his overriding feelings from childhood is that it must have been his fault that he was neglected. This is a common conclusion in many people who have experienced childhood trauma. That belief that it's your fault, I really hear that the little boy inside of you believe, believed and believes that. You in your rational perspective, how do you see that? these days 
Well, of course, it wasn't my fault. Mm. But I feel like, you know, that's so deep. Yes. You know, the, the root of that is yeah, so yeah. deep that I can't reach it. Yes. By myself. Yeah, I hear you. It feels to me that that is really at the heart of, of the work for us to do, right? That there's a, there's a evolving of the understanding of that little boy inside of you that he really understands mm. that it's not your fault. Because, you know, as I think you clearly understand, it's one thing in your rational mind to know something, but it's another thing to really feel that on, mm. on a deeper level. And you can't think your way to, to feeling that. And you can't yeah. just keep telling yourself that, you know, you could do affirmations till the cows come home in front of a mirror saying, I love myself, it's not my fault. But it doesn't really impact that place inside mm. of you, which has been, in a sense, imprinted. Like it's, it's, it's that little boy has learned some fundamental things about himself and the world that, as far as he's concerned, helped him survive. Mm. You know, and I was reflecting on, like in our first session, you were talking about how you'd often go into imagination and kind of fancy in your mind as a, as a way of escaping what was mm. happening in in day-to-day -day life and so it's like we put these walls up to to keep the world out to protect us but then the walls that you built to protect yourself are now the walls that have, have caused you to feel trapped mm. it's easy to think negatively about the ways we learn to cope when subjected to trauma as a child but it was these very strategies that helped us to survive at the time. In adulthood, these strategies no longer serve us. In fact, they often become maladaptive. But by understanding that they once served a very necessary purpose, we can begin to let them go from a place of love and self-care. Yeah, so how, how I see this, this kind of work is really what it is, is it's a relationship. And it's a relationship between you and the little boy inside of you. Or between you and your emotional body, you know, with different language and ways mm. we can talk about it. When you were a little boy, that place inside of you was entirely dependent upon the people looking after you, which initially that part of you was well looked after mm. by your grandmother and your auntie. And part of the trauma here is being separated away from that. And if you've been separated away from that, but somebody else had taken over the caretaking of that part of you, there may still have been the, the, the sadness and the loss of those relationships, but at least that, that need for, for love and for holding would have mm. been met. But because it wasn't, that was particularly traumatizing because you were pulled away from the source of that and it wasn't, wasn't replaced. And at six years old, when that happened, you were simply too young to be able to meet that place for yourself. If that had happened to you at 16 or 26 or, or whatever, you would have had more capacity on an unconscious level to go, right, there's a need here. Mm. And to see, to, you know, maybe you would have, you know, reached out to, to close friends or you may have actively tried to connect with other family members or you may have found yourself in an intimate relationship that, but you would have had more options in terms of how to meet that need. But because you didn't have those options available because you were too young to be able to, to do those things, to just feel the, 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 the loss of that would have been too painful. So what you learned to do was to escape in your mind. And, and as we, we talked about a little bit last time, the, the gift, the opportunity of being an adult is that we can learn to meet those needs for ourselves. And on one level, it's a very simple thing. It's not always an easy thing, but the principle of it is a simple thing, which is, there is a place inside of you that is longing for for love, for attention, for interest, for, for care, for entering its world and wanting to really experience it and be with that. And what that looks like is opening to it and giving it your attention. And that's not something 
the worst the worst way to do that is to try and force it to go right now i'm gonna make all this mm. happen and feel, feel all of this stuff just like in our relationship in a therapeutic relationship or in a friendship or an intimate relationship trust is something which is built in steps and generally it's it's not appropriate just to blindly trust we kind of need to have our, our guards and defenses to, to make sure we keep ourselves safe and so part of our work together is you gradually building some trust with that little boy inside of you which is probably he's probably not very trusting because of, of what he's experienced and the, the kind of um currency or or, or the kind of energy of that is really your attention that you're actually really interested mm. and you're listening to and, and making space for and if i liken it to if i think about being with being with my children for example i can be in the room and they know i'm not in the room <laughs> if i'm in the room and i'm off mm. in my head or i'm in my phone or i'm, I'm doing something else that really giving them attention they feel it and i feel it and there, there's a there's a a kind of an intimacy that happens because we're connected and that's what we're working towards in you in your relationship with that younger part in you and it's a skill and it takes practice and we'll start we can work with it together but i want to set that frame and expectation that this has taken decades to be set up the way that it is and it takes some time to build mm. that trust and so part of and i'll help you with this but part of your job in relating to it is to go gently and to be patient and to recognize that ultimately what you're doing is you're you're rebuilding a relationship with mm. yourself so i just threw lots more words at you so i'm just curious as to how that no yeah, actually, that makes sense and yeah yeah, yeah it does it does make a lot of sense and uh i think i've well i don't know if i've already started but quite regularly i speak to my younger to that younger part yes and just uh you know um very often you know when just when i'm at home i think oh we're safe now look mm -hmm. you know we're far away from these people all of that he's so he's over yes we're fine but then you know as you were talking i realized that it's more about me now talking to him rather than me listening yeah I think that's part of the difference. Mm. And I think what you've been doing is great. It's it's a step towards it. So it's not that it, it's 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 wrong. But it's very much a two-way conversation. Yep. For the next part of the session, I'm going to be doing something a little different with Pierre. Just talking about our history doesn't ultimately change our experience of it. And so we're going to be working to get in touch with the feelings of his younger self to help support a deeper healing. So this is this we can do with your eyes open, closed. There isn't any kind of massively set form. But what I'd like to do is to take a little bit of time to put more of your attention on that felt sense. So right now, so you and I are talking and there's things happening in the room. And there's probably some of your attention external, some internal. What we're looking to do is to have more of the attention internal and a little bit less external. So sometimes it is easier for, to close your eyes just because there's less kind of mm. input. But for some people, closing their eyes can feel quite overwhelming. I don't know. Are you comfortable to close your eyes to work with it? Yeah. We, and we you can, can open again. It's not like a... <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to close your eyes for a minute and just start by just noticing what you feel in your chest in your belly where you were pointing towards a little bit earlier mm. right now in this moment yeah what's the felt sense that's there um there's a tiny bit of warmth just here hmm. really um and also here but you know is the feels like it's the remnants of activity you know like post activity yes. Uh, yes you know as if the body's coming down yes really so just let your body settle so let there be the warmth let there be that sort of post activity kind of movement that's there curious then if you bring into your mind that younger place inside of you that younger boy that lived through these different experiences that we've been exploring 
And as you bring him into your mind, where do you feel him in your body? Yeah. Okay, good. And what is that felt sense that you feel? Um, I feel a lot of compassion and tenderness. Okay, good. So you feel a compassion and tenderness towards him. And how does he respond to that? Yeah, he's really, he wants to be hugged. Yeah, so let you let yourself give him that inner hug. And just really letting him know that you want to give him more space. You want to understand him. And how does he respond as you do that now? He doesn't. Hmm. Because you know, as as you were talking, I remember I I thought, well, actually, I know what he's thinking. That's me. Hmm. So um, maybe that's a sign of you know me not listening. So is there a sort of idea that you already know, so you don't need to listen to him? Mm. Yeah. And what? So what you notice is when you think that you get nothing from him. So see if you can just notice that and then see if you can approach him a little differently. Maybe even inside of your mind to him, just gently apologizing and saying, hey, I realize I talk a lot of you and I'm really curious as to how you feel and what you think. Mm. And what happens as you do that? Um, I feel like he's holding me by my hand and he's taking me to his room. Does it feel okay to follow him? Yeah, yeah, because he really just wants to show me his toys and his room. He just wants to share with me. Yeah. So let him do that. Just being really curious about Mm. him and realizing that, you know, he's not something or someone that needs fixing or changing he just needs some love and some interest and some curiosity and just notice how he's impacted by your presence yeah he's really enjoying the the attention really and how is it for you um i feel like i have to um bite my tongue so i don't you know so i don't talk at him really. yeah and just you know give him the space yeah so that's a really good thing to notice right there's a tendency towards wanting to talk at him tell him things but actually what what really gives him the support is your attention and your presence not your words Just noticing as you give him some more time. Just seeing how your attention and your presence and your interest and your curiosity, how perhaps it helps him to be a little bit more relaxed with you. And maybe there's some things that he wants to say to you. Maybe not. But just seeing what happens if you give him, it's more the invitation of space than it is trying to draw something out of him. He feels very lonely. Mm. What's the felt sense of the loneliness? What does it feel like? Yeah, he's here again. And is it okay to feel that now? Yeah. Just see if you can give invitation and space to the feeling of loneliness. And the longing and wanting of something. And he, he feels trapped as well. Yes. How is it for him to 
can know that you know he feels trapped. I don't know. I mean, I feel like yeah. saying, like, uh, but that's me talking, not yeah. him. I think the point that I'm particularly pointing at is that he, he is trapped yeah. and he feels trapped. But I wonder how it is for him to know that you see that. Right. You can't fix it, you can't change it, but you see that he feels trapped. Yeah, he's, he's very sad, but... At least, you know, somebody is, is there for him. Yeah. Or being, being cut off from his source of love, feeling sad and feeling trapped sounds really appropriate. Sounds like a very human response. Mm. And how is it to just give him space to feel that way? Yeah, he's, he's crying a lot. Mm. And how does that impact you? Um, well, he's very sad, but you know, at least somebody's there for him. And um, I also know that you know that's not going to last. It's not going to last, but it, it lasted a long time at the time. Yeah, very long. I really want you just to give space to his sadness. And his sadness, which ultimately, of course, has been your sadness. And just letting him really have those feelings now. I feel like there's some energy radiating from my chest. Can you describe it? Um... I feel like as he's crying, then that energy is leaving my body as well. Yeah, good. So just let it do that. And let the energy move. Let him have his tears. But also for him to have your love and your attention mm. and your presence. And as you notice the energy releasing and moving what do you then feel in the space that it leaves relief relief that you know that energy is gone and um, yeah I, I'm, I feel like it's that end or you know that hole will be replaced by something positive so what is that something that's positive so there's a relief and there's mm. been a release if you really feel into that part of your body what's there what's the f the felt sense of what's there potential mm. and what does potential feel like well um Overall, it's been it's been okay so far. So why would it stop? <laughs> okay. And what does that feel like in your body? Like, is it a is it warm? Is it cool? Is it big? Is it small? Like, what's the what are, what's the felt sense? Um, almost like buzzing. You're buzzing. Yeah. Okay. Good. And does it feel okay to give some space to that buzzing? Let it yeah. Pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's really uh, excitement. Yeah. So it's excitement. Okay. Now, what does that excitement mean for those places in your life where you might have thought you didn't have what it takes? Well, it's the opposite of expecting difficulty. Huh. So it's really, um, it might not go my way, but, you know, it's, it's going to be all right, regardless. Right. So there's less fear of rejection mm. or less fear of failure or less fear of well, success. I'm not, you know, in a way, I'm not thinking about that. I, you know, I'm thinking, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not backing down. So there's, you know, um, it's going to happen. Hmm. 
regardless you know uh so you're gonna make it happen yeah yeah what does that feel like in your body i feel i feel really calm actually Mm. i'd like you to imagine in your mind going through the next week or two meeting the world more from this place it's a place of being closer to yourself Mm. giving space to that little boy inside of you but also being more in touch with your own capacity and your own sense of potential and just imagine in your mind going through some of the possible events of the next few weeks and how they might be a little different as you meet them in that way Mm. and you can imagine going then a few months a few years in the future because we know you're good at imagining things and (laughs) just having a sense of you meeting the world in a different way Mm. and knowing that you can trust your unconscious mind just like your conscious mind to learn the things it needs to to allow you to show up in the ways that are most true for you and continuing just feeling your body's weight feeling your hands and then when you're ready you can open your eyes back up and you may suddenly think back a bit bright or just seeing the things around and how does how do you feel right now yeah good So I think this is a, a a first exploration. It's something that I really want to encourage you to do more of, which is to just give space to what you feel and in a sense to be curious about it. And sometimes we're kind of directing with our conscious mind quite a lot. And other times it's just, what do I feel? And giving that some space and then often we feel something and it can be a little bit like a wave that we feel it and it kind of moves through then there's something else that's coming and just in a sense getting out of the way and allowing that inner movement to happen more because one of the things that happens when we go through traumas or life is overwhelming is the whole thing becomes rigid and Mm. it shuts down and that natural flow becomes blocked and so really what we're doing here is helping reinstate helping create the environment to allow that natural flow to happen how do you feel about doing that yeah well it's a new habit to take yeah does it feel okay um i don't know if okay is the word but but, uh, um it's a bit like you know what i was saying earlier um it needs to happen yeah you know on paper and really uh i have my dream job really mm. and yet i'm petrified yeah and i don't want to go through life like that yeah it's not worth it really. so that's what i mean by it has to happen yeah it's funny you know there are people that i work with and if i imagine the work we do together being really fruitful I can imagine a lot of the external things in their life being different. So, you know, different job, different relationship, different friend. Like, and I, and then there are other people, and I think it's more the case for you, that some things may change in the external world, but also a lot of things probably won't change in the external world. There may be people around you that think nothing's different. But if we're successful in our work together, the world will feel different, mm. even though... I yeah. think I agree. I think you're already doing what you should be doing in terms of, of of your work. That doesn't need to change, but the place from which you meet it is what can be yeah. different. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my approach to it and how I experience it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to take you some more homework. <laughs> Thank you for sending me by the way that, that I homework last time. I'm going to give you access to an online program um, called the Reset Program. To find out more about the Reset Program, you can register for a free three-part video series at reset.alexhoward.com. It's a module related to um, what I call the six emotional styles of disconnection. And it's 
or put another way, the six emotional defenses, like the ways that we learn to not feel our feelings and emotions. And there's some exercises in there that will just bring some more context and some more awareness of, of some of what we've been talking about today. Um, so that's part one. And then part two is just to continue really what we've been doing the best the best you can. It doesn't need to be quite as formulaic as, 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 as how we were kind of working as in you don't have to always close your eyes and sort of make it a kind of thing but just and it sounds like this has already been happening somewhat instinctively anyway since we first met over the last couple of weeks but just giving some space to how you feel and not trying to make it better not trying to fix mm -hmm. it not trying to come up not trying to reframe it into a positive kind of kind of outcome but just allowing space for the feelings that are actually there yep great any questions i've been asking you questions <laughs> last hour so do you have any questions for me uh not just yet yeah okay good good well thank you and thank you for being willing to 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 dive in a little bit with me i, I think it's the as we said in our first session and, and also towards the start today that i think a key part of of, of, of of this is is moving from just understanding it to actually the felt sense mm. of it. And so I think that's an important piece for both for us, but also for you to to just really give that the space and the, the time that it that it deserves. Mm. That you deserve. Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Pierre. Our emotional healing is not something that ultimately happens in our minds. It is a healing in our emotional and physical bodies. To help support this healing, we have to transform our own relationship with ourselves. The first step to doing this is to explore what is happening in the relationship now and to make space for what we are feeling, whatever it might be. The act of listening to our own needs and emotions in of itself is an act of self-love and a step towards meeting our core needs. Continue to follow Pierre's journey over the coming weeks as we release weekly episodes of his sessions with me. You can watch here on YouTube or listen to the episode as a podcast. And to help support you in coming on the journey with us, I've created some materials to accompany the series. Each week, there is a bonus video with me and worksheet to bring the session to life for you. In this week's reflections, we will be exploring how you are relating to yourself in this moment and how you can open up to a deeper inner connection. You can find these resources for free at intherapy.alexhoward.com. Here is what is coming up next week. Often the anger and the rage and the hatred is a defense. Mm. So it's not about this being a destination. It's about this being the, the portal through which to, to move to the deep truth of it. Mm.